After studying this module, you shall be able to know, number one, what is economic development? How entrepreneurship helps in economic development? What are the various types of entrepreneurs? How women entrepreneurs help in economic development? How are they different from men entrepreneurs? How are Indian women entrepreneurs different from other foreign women entrepreneurs? How are rural women entrepreneurs different from urban women entrepreneurs in India? And how entrepreneurship can help economic development in India? You see, economic development is often defined as a process in which the real per capita income of a nation increases over a period of time. But then, the question arises that what causes this development? There are innumerable factors that cause the economy of a country to develop and entrepreneurship is one among them. According to Schumpeter, economic development consists of employing resources in a different way in doing new combination of means of production. Hence, it is the entrepreneur who locates ideas and puts them into effect in the process of economic development. Hence, the entrepreneur becomes the agent of change in society. Uh, I shall now see how entrepreneurship causes economy to grow and how various types of entrepreneurs contribute to a country's economic development. So firstly, I would like to take up the concept of entrepreneurship, a determinant of economic development. That is how entrepreneurship has helped in creating economic development in a country. You see, in the beginning of the development era, the attitude of classical economists was very cold towards the role of entrepreneurship in economic development. You must all have heard about Adam Smith. He was a classical economist, a very famous one, who did not assign any significance to entrepreneurial role in economic development. According to him, Capital formation was the main determinant of economic development and this largely depended on the ability of the people to save more and invest more in a country. So it was not at all entrepreneurs who helped in economic development, rather it was the ability to save and invest or what we call capital formation which led to economic development. Another economist, David Ricardo, identified only three factors of production, namely land, capital and labor, among which the entire produce is distributed as rent, profit and wages respectively. According to him, profit leads to saving of wealth, which ultimately goes to capital formation. Thus, both Smith and Ricardo ignored the contribution of entrepreneurship in economic development. It was much later that the role of the entrepreneur was considered of very great significance in bringing industrial growth and thus economic development in both the developed and underdeveloped countries. It has been realized that for achieving the goal of economic development, it is necessary to increase entrepreneurship in the country. It is the entrepreneurs of a country who, who explore the potentialities of the country's available resources. And what are those resources? Land, labor, technology and capital. These entrepreneurs use the resources and produce goods and services out of them. The goods and services so produced by them contribute to the economic development of a country. However, the role of entrepreneurship in economic development varies from economy to economy depending upon its material resources, industrial climate and the responsiveness of the political system to the entrepreneurial function. So these three factors matter a lot. That is the raw material, what kind of industrial climate we have and what kind of government interference or, it, uh, or contribution is towards entrepreneurship. So I think these are the three things which matter a lot for entrepreneurial growth in a country. 
It is assumed that the entrepreneurs contribute more in economies with relatively more favorable conditions than in the economies with relatively less favorable conditions. Hence, what type of entrepreneurs shall emerge in a country depends a lot on the type of facilitative, that is political and economic setup available in that particular country. Now let me tell you more about the types of entrepreneurs. You see, not all entrepreneurs are alike. This was observed by Clarence H. Denhoff. Denhoff, on the basis of a study of American agriculture, classified entrepreneurs into four types. Now let's see what those four types were. First, innovating entrepreneurs. These were entrepreneurs who work to break the status quo and constantly engage themselves in doing things differently and are called innovators. They innovate by introducing new goods, finding new methods of production, discovering new markets or reorganizing the enterprise. I'm sure this reminds us of Schumpeterian innovation. Such entrepreneurs work only when a certain level of development has already been achieved and hence people look for change and improvement in their existing goods and services. So such entrepreneurs are mostly found in developed countries. Now let's talk about the second type. The second type are called imitative entrepreneurs. These entrepreneurs adopt successful innovations introduced by innovating entrepreneurs elsewhere. They do not innovate but only imitate techniques and technology innovated by others. Such entrepreneurs are generally found in underdeveloped countries where they imitate new combinations of factors of production already prevalent in developed countries. The third type are called Fabian entrepreneurs. These are entrepreneurs who bring any kind of change in their enterprise with great caution. These people are lazy, shy and lack the will to adopt new methods of production. They imitate only when they are confident that failure to imitate the change will result in loss in business. Now let's talk about the fourth type. These are called the drone entrepreneurs. These entrepreneurs are ones who refuse to make any change in their business even if it means loss to business. So these people just do not change no matter what. They are ready to suffer losses but are not ready to make changes in their existing production methods. They are laggards who continue to operate in their traditional way and resist any kind of change. So you see, drone entrepreneurs won't remain entrepreneurs very soon. Now because of paucity of funds, lack of skilled labor, lack of proper infrastructure, the conditions in underdeveloped economies are less conducive to the emergence of entrepreneurs, especially the innovative entrepreneurs. In developing and underdeveloped economies, non-innovative entrepreneurs like the imitative, Fabians and drones are generally noticed. Entrepreneurs in such regions are not innovators but are imitators who copy the innovations made by the innovative entrepreneurs of the developed countries. As imitation requires lesser funds than innovation, therefore it is considered that developing countries have more of imitative entrepreneurs. Also, due to lack of funds and infrastructure, the entrepreneurs in developing nations launch their enterprises on a small scale. Now let's talk about woman entrepreneur and her role to economic development of a nation. Women have been regarded as the nuclei of a nation and the builder of its destiny. That's so true. The position and status of women in a country is an index of the country's growth and development. 
The emergence of women entrepreneur in the economy is an indicator of women's economic independence and their improved social status. This is so true because if we see women empowerment in developed countries, it is far, far ahead than women empowerment in developing or underdeveloped countries. You see, the women, they help industrial development, they promote economic development and help in solving the problem of unemployment and poverty in a country. We shall now see how women entrepreneurs are different from men entrepreneurs and how Indian women in general are different from foreign women entrepreneurs. Now let's first take up how women entrepreneurs are different from men entrepreneurs. While the characteristics of men and women entrepreneurs are quite similar, you see because both are entrepreneurs, so they have to have something in common like your sense of independence, confidence, so these are something which is quite similar in both kinds of entrepreneurs. But in some respects, women entrepreneurs, uh, women entrepreneurs possess different motivations, problems and business skills than their men counterparts. According to R.D. Hisrich and M.P. Peters, the major differences between men and women entrepreneurs are the following. Let's see what they are. One, men are motivated by the drive to control their own destiny. This drive often arises from disagreements with their boss or a feeling that they can run things better than their boss. Women, on the other hand, are motivated by the need for achievement arising from job frustration in not being allowed to perform at the level at which they are capable. So probably it is the glass ceiling which drives women towards entrepreneurship. Secondly, for men, entrepreneurship is an outgrowth of a present job, sideline or a hobby. They relate their entrepreneurial venture with past experience. On the other hand, women entrepreneurs start an entrepreneurial venture with a lot of enthusiasm for a new venture rather than past experience after leaving the previous job due to job frustration, which I have already said may be due to glass ceiling. Hence, the transition from job to entrepreneurship is more difficult for women than men because women start business or take up any entrepreneurial venture which may not have had any past experience. Men entrepreneurs list investors, bank loans, personal loans in addition to personal funds as sources of startup capital. Women entrepreneurs rely heavily on personal assets and savings. They generally start with very small capital and this capital is basically generated from their own personal savings and they do not uh, take bank loans uh, mostly because bank loans are denied to them, they are not given loans. So there are various problems why women uh, often start with their personal savings to start a business. Another point of distinction is that men are more, of, more often specialists in their fields or have attained competence in a variety of business skills. Their experience is often in manufacturing, finance or technical areas. Women in contrast usually have administrative experience which is limited to the middle management level often in more service related areas such as education, secretarial work, retail sales or hospitality sector. So you see we still find very few women in the manufacturing sector. Manufacturing sector is again dominated by men entrepreneur and not women. Another point of distinction is the personality. In personalities both men and women are quite similar. Both tend to be energetic, goal-oriented and independent, which I said that in some respect both have common characteristics. However, men are often more confident and less flexible and tolerant than women, which can result in very different management styles. So you see women, when we talk about the tolerance level, yes, women entrepreneurs are more tolerant than men. Flexibility, uh, women are quite renowned for multitasking. So they are very flexible when they have to switch over from one job to another, from one task to another. So this way women entrepreneurs have a little different qualities from men entrepreneurs. 
and the last one business ventures started by men and women entrepreneurs differ in terms of their nature while women are more likely to start a business in a service related area like retail public relations education etc men on the other hand are more likely to enter manufacturing construction or high technology fields now i will give you a little more detail uh, description of indian women entrepreneur you see being indians i think our focus should be more on women entrepreneur in india and uh, when we try to compare them with the uh, foreign women entrepreneur we find there is a lot of difference so let's see how women entrepreneur are different from foreign women women entrepreneur you see in india women take more responsibilities in bringing up children and maintaining a better home with love and affection this aspect of women being the nucleus of the family is envied by the westerners since they lack such family affinity you see in western society mostly we have nuclear families in india of course in cities and in urban metropolitan cities we do find nuclear families but still in india which comprises of majority of the rural population we still find joint family setup the nature of foreign women entrepreneurs reveal different features of women entrepreneurs as compared to indian women entrepreneurs for instance let me take some some examples from uh, various other countries uh, for instance in france and canada women assume entrepreneurial role either as heirs or founders who dissatisfied with their bosses start their own ventures in germany before 1977 law aided the husbands to prevent their wives from working so there was this kind of uh, gender discrimination in germany as well before 1977 modifications of the law have now brought relief to the suffocated gender in germany so now women are allowed to work independently the husbands cannot stop them from working in india too the one third reservation policy in favor of women may help in reducing the gender gap so this came in india as a law and i am sure with changing times this law might help in removing the gender gap which still is quite uh, prevalent in india in japan men are transferred to all the departments and they develop themselves as multifaceted personalities whereas the policy of no transfer for women leads them to become specialists so you see in japan men are allowed to function in various departments whereas women are given the specialist position this stuff welcomed by women who have multiple roles to play acts as a hurdle when it comes to the questions of selection of ceo where journalists are preferred so you see master of all trades are basically preferred to become ceo so because men have had uh, experience in various fields so therefore men are generally preferred in japan to become ceos and not women now according to vasant desai it is not that women do not have skills or capacity but they are not properly trained or initiated in craftsmanship because it is felt that if a skill is imparted to a girl it is wasted because when she gets married she takes away the skill with her therefore it is preferred that women work only as helpers so you see this is something which is uh, obstructing women in india to become entrepreneur because the mentality is that a woman now even her family they discourage her to become an entrepreneur before marriage uh, they feel that once she gets married after she goes to her husband's house then she is free to do whatever she wants to because she has to shift her home from her parental home to her husband's home so before marriage they find uh, entrepreneur as a risky venture for unmarried women and this is true even today in india Uh, women in india are restrained from working independently unmarried women are considered the most undependable by the funding agencies as well because they anticipate that once married they would change their place of domicile and also their family environment would change which may not be congenial to their working as an entrepreneur indian women entrepreneurs face additional difficulties such as lack of training lack of finance lack of raw material and institutional support 
Above all, they are hardly aware of the various entrepreneurial schemes available. See, the government is providing schemes to women especially, but most of the women in India who want to become entrepreneur are ignorant about these schemes. As a result, they choose to remain in employment or engage in self-employment activities related to trade or service. Now let's see the Indian Rural Women Entrepreneur. You see the Indian Rural Women Entrepreneurs are more vulnerable in comparison to urban women because the urban women have wide scope of activities around them. On the other hand, the rural women do not have enough opportunity to make use of their economic potential. Rural women play a significant role in agriculture and artisanal activities apart from the household activities. In rural in India, most of the girls after finishing their school education stay back at home doing nothing. Very few take up training in tailoring and other such activities. Again, according to Vasant Desai, rural women work along with men since time immemorial. Their contribution in monetary terms remains unaccounted or even if accounted, it is given a very low value which is so sad because their economic contribution is not taken into account. They are mostly engaged in low paid, back breaking agricultural activities or act as helpers in handicrafts. So in order to tap the potential of rural women entrepreneur, a favorable atmosphere must be created so that a lot of rural women take up entrepreneurial activities. Now let me take some of the examples of Indian women entrepreneur. I'll take my first example as uh, Shehnaz Hussain. I'm sure you all must have heard about Shehnaz Hussain. She's a world famous personality today. You see, she is one of the first Indian women entrepreneurs to become famous not only in India but world over. She came from a traditional Muslim family and was married at a tender age of 15. At the age of 16, she became a mother. When she went to Tehran with her husband, she developed a keen interest in beauty treatments and took up a course in cosmetology. Later, Shehnaz Hussain studied Ayurveda and did a training in cosmetic therapy from London, New York and Copenhagen. She came back to India and started her own beauty salon in the year 1977. Since then, she has never looked back. She has made use of herbal cosmetics which are quite famous internationally. The beauty products made by her not only can be seen in Indian stores but also in the stores abroad. Her beauty products are very skin friendly and give a beautiful glowing look. She has not only been able to tap the markets of India but made her presence felt in international markets as well. She is now aiming to set her foothold in the space. People who go to space usually suffer from skin problems. So she is now trying to create products that can prove to be beneficial for the astronauts. So you see this entrepreneurial zeal in her is there as well as she is so very innovative. She is trying to find innovative ways and means to um, make our skin beautiful and now she is venturing into making the skin of astronauts beautiful. Now let me take another example. This example is that of Kiran Majumdar Shaw. I am sure many of you must have heard about her. She is the first Indian businesswoman who as chairman and managing director of Biocon India Group which was established in the year 1978 had led to a pioneering enterprise that has utilized India's homegrown scientific talent to make breakthroughs in clinical research. Majandar Shaw was a daughter of a brewmaster for India based United Breweries and so she wanted to follow her father's footsteps. She earned an undergraduate degree in zoology from Bangalore University in 1973 and a graduate degree in brewing from the University of Ballarat, Melbourne in 1975. After returning to India, she found that no company in India was willing to offer her a brewing job as it was considered a man's domain. So you see, she did find trouble in getting employment. Instead. She did consulting work for a few years before meeting Leslie Ockencollis, 
then owner of an Irish firm, Biocon Biochemicals. Mr. Leslie Okin Kloss was impressed by Majundar Shaw's drive and ambition. He took her on as a partner in a new venture, Biocon India, which was launched in 1978 and produced enzymes for alcoholic beverages, paper and other products. And what do you see? That within a year, Biocon became the first Indian company to export enzymes to the United States and Europe. But progress was slowed as Majumdar Shaw continued to face skepticism, skepticism and discrimination. So you see, she did face a lot of trouble in India being a woman. She found it difficult to find employees in India who were willing to work for a woman. So you see, uh, even men were not ready to work for a woman in those days. Investors were equally hard to come by and some vendors refused to do business with her unless she hired a male manager. So you see, Majumdar had so much of problems, so much of challenges which she tried to overcome. But eventually, after a lot of perseverance and hard work, in the year 2001, Biocon became the first Indian company to gain the approval of the US Food and Drug Administration for the manufacture of a cholesterol-lowering molecule. The company subsequently expanded exponentially. Profits jumped more than 42% in 2003 alone. Over the years, Biocon has continued its trailblazing work with the testing and development of the world's first orally consumed insulin product among its most notable undertakings. So you see Majumdar Shaw is one of the best examples for India and world across who has made a breakthrough in a man's domain. Now let me tell you about uh, the entrepreneurship and economic development, how entrepreneurship has helped economic development in India. In the Indian context, lack of entrepreneurship is often regarded as a limiting factor for the acceleration of the process of industrialization. In India, the entrepreneurs are not necessarily innovators, but are imitators who copy the organizational type, technology and products of innovations from developed countries in Europe and America. India has a plethora of economic problems and entrepreneurship is seen as a panacea for all these problems. Entrepreneurship not only contributes in industrial development but also solves the problem of unemployment, backwardness, concentration of economic power and diversion of profits from traditional avenues of investment. Hence, entrepreneurial promotion is a must for a developing country like India. Now, in spite of abundant natural resources, the pace of industrial development in India has been quite slow. One of the most prominent reasons for this has been the lack of untapped entrepreneurial talent in the country. In India, the infrastructural facilities are scarce, hence the promotional role of the government assumes special significance. After independence, the government recognized the need for infrastructure for the development of entrepreneurship to accelerate the industrial growth and therefore came out with various policies like the five-year plans. The five-year plan stressed on the development of small and village industries for promoting the avenues for industrial growth and thereby minimizing the concentration of wealth and power and the removal of evils of monopoly. However, the government failed to fully implement its industrial and economic policies. It focused primarily on providing financial and physical facilities with the illusion that there will be an automatic flow of entrepreneurs if such facilities are provided to them. So the government actually failed. But in recent years, the government and the policy makers have realized their mistake and laid more emphasis on promotion of entrepreneurship and not on developing physical and financial facilities alone. There have been various organizations and institutions like NISBAT, which is the National Institute for Entrepreneurship and Small Business Development, EDI, Entrepreneurship Development Institute of India, 
and NISTEDS like National Science and Technology Entrepreneurship Development Board which have been set up to develop and administer training programs for the existing as well as potential entrepreneurs. They provide motivational training programs to develop entrepreneurs and make policies and take measures to modify the environment to stimulate entrepreneurial behavior among individuals in the country. The present government, which is the NDA government, has created a separate ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship to promote entrepreneurship in the country. The ministry has been formed with the aim to speed up the reorganization of the ecosystem of skill development and entrepreneurship promotion in the country that suits the needs of the industry and gives a decent quality of life to the people of India. The ministry came into existence on 10th November 2014. So you see friends, we see a positive and a good future for entrepreneurial development in our country. Thank you.